go. Howdy folks, it is one o'clock and we are back for another of our uh, live artist development seminars for CG Bytes. I am Les Garner from 601 Media, uh, your guide through all things um, content development related. And so here we are, um, had actually a little bit of a rocky start running up to this because uh, YouTube servers decided to, uh, to kick me out repeatedly and uh, had to kind of mess with some settings and you know have a little bit of fun with that, but uh, but it actually managed to come together right at the last second. So let's 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 hit the ground running with this. So um, let us see. All righty. Well, this week's uh, this week's subject is um, kind of kind of nifty. It's uh, um, something that is I feel. Um, a highly overlooked and misunderstood aspect of Daz Studio that can make for some really quickly produced, very cool products. Um, and uh, what we're going to be going over today is the use of geo shells. Okay, so um, this is this is an interesting thing that they added to Daz Studio, and uh, I've been having some fun with it. There's a lot of stuff that we can do with it. Uh, today, for a sample, we have a, a freebie that is a set of, uh, of kind of makeups, uh, face paints, some nifty stuff like that. Um, and uh, what I'm going to do is show you kind of how I made those. And you can see I already have a scene up where I have those made. Um, it's actually a really straightforward process. It's, it's, it's very cool. Um, I'll be touching on really two different ways to deal with this. Um, you don't even need ZBrush necessarily, although I will probably pop over into ZBrush at some point because that's where I like to work. However, um, everything that you would uh, that you would do for uh, or that, that I've done here, you could do inside Photoshop and uh, or any image editor. It's actually uh, this, it's a great like it's a great gateway technique for folks who want to start making products and start kind of generating some income for themselves. Um, in 3D content, but maybe you don't have the programs, or maybe you don't have, you know, you, you haven't bought ZBrush or whatever else yet, and you're just, you know, wondering if there is a path for you to, to do this without a bunch of upfront expense, and there is. Um, I mean, in theory, you could go grab um, the GIMP, the uh, uh, kind of Photoshop clone that's uh, open source, or any number of, of low cost or free image editors. And actually make full products like this that are super cool. People dig this stuff. So we're gonna go ahead and jump into this. Um, the whole process. Let me start a new scene here, and we'll just uh, just walk through. And let me start a new scene over here because I'm gonna send some stuff over here. Um, let me start a new scene. Actually, we'll just kill this because I don't want this yet. And we're going to load in our G3 female. Go. Genesis 3 female. Give that just a moment. Clear that, uh, that frame out of my viewport settings. And I'm going to focus on just the face, but you can use geo shells on anything. Okay, so the first thing, of course, is how do I create a geo shell? What is a, what is a geo shell? Um, a geo shell is the the is simply put a duplicate of the figure. It's actually the figure's geometry duplicated in the scene, and it's inflated out from the original geometry ever so slightly, like so slightly that you can't really even tell that it's an overlay. So to create a geo shell, we'll just go up here to create. And then where did you go? Where did you go? Where did you go? Let's see. I don't know why I'm having a total brain fart there. There we go. There it is. New geometry shell. Okay. And we'll just accept all the default settings on here. Hit accept. And then you'll see it almost becomes um, 
cartoon-like, which there are some ideas that I have for that that I'm going to play with at some point because that's it's actually really nifty how um, uh, it comes in in a way that emulates a kind of 3D rendering that, or a kind of a cartoon rendering that I've done before in, in other programs. So that's just kind of a mental note to myself. So I need to play with that some more. So anyway, once you have your GeoShell present, it becomes selectable inside the Scene tab, but not in the Viewport. So that's, that's kind of the first thing to keep in mind, is once you toss one of these on, you're going to access it through the Scene tab, because if you just click out in the Viewport, it's going to select the figure. And the reason for that is most of the time you're not really going to want to do anything directly to a Geo Shell and posing or whatever. So um, if we zoom in really, really close, and we go into, um, let's do wire texture shaded. Here you can see, if I turn off my geo shell, you can see in the overlay there, in the, in the wireframe, the overlay of polys. So all it really is, is a duplicate of the original figure's polygons. And, and if we look at an edge, um, starting to, to curl away from the camera, you can see how inflated out from the original mesh the GeoShell is. And there are settings for that. We can actually mess with that quite a bit. So let's uh, select our GeoShell here in the Scene tab, and then we'll go to Parameters. And under Parameters, this has a special little parameter on here called Mesh Offset. And that mesh offset, right now the offset on that is 0.1. If we were to just, I'm just clicking on the, the, the minus sign so I can incrementally dial it down. We could take it down to just 0 0.01 and there you can barely tell that it's, that it's there at all. Or we can increase it there you see the nature of what this is. Now obviously it's duplicating all the geometry, so the entire inner mouth, the eyes, all that stuff is present, uh, which we don't necessarily want. So I'm going to take this back down to a .01, nice and tight. Actually it's, let's make it larger so you can see it real clearly, okay? Uh, right now it's going to look kind of crappy because I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm keeping it blown up so that you can see it. But um, there's another section in the parameters for a geo shell that you want to look at. And uh, in, uh, um, in the Genesis figures, there are, there are things set up that interact with the geo shells that give you all of these nice little settings that you can, you can use on them. If you're going to use geo shells on something that, is, that doesn't have this stuff set up, then these things probably, you're not going to find stuff in there that looks like this. This is something that's special, uh, but it's super handy. So here we can see the geo shells inflated out from the figure. And with all of these, we have all of these uh, visibility settings. They, they are what they say they are. It's visibility for different sections. So, for instance, if we turn off eyelashes, you see the, the geo shell mesh corresponding to the eyelashes goes away. Um, eye socket, eye moisture. Um, and you're going to turn off, for what I'm going to do today, I'm going to be turning off the vast majority of these. So uh, I'm going to show you a quick trick for doing that is to uh, right click on and go to edit mode on these parameters and I'm going to select the top one, scroll all the way down to the bottom, right click and then I'll go set, right click and go to set, values, okay, and where it says current value, multiple, I'm going to set them all to off. So now it's completely hidden. Then I can just go through and turn on only the ones that I want. And sometimes the regions are duplicated with body parts and you may have to turn a body part listing that's in here on in order to get regions to also turn back on. So let's go find head and turn it on. And then we should be able to turn on, there we go, there's lips and face.
Okay, so now you can see we have just a geo shell for the lips and face, which is all we really want to work with today. Now, all of the stuff that you're going to see me do um, is repeatable through the other body parts. You can carry this stuff over into other places, and there is a lot of super cool stuff that we can do with it. So, um, we're going to focus, though, on the face just because I think it's the most interesting part. It's what a lot of people, a, a very common, well, I shouldn't say common because these aren't very commonly used yet, but um, a, a very uh, uh, useful way to apply geo shells is in creating makeups. You can create makeups for a character that will sit on, on the face and they'll just follow any character preset that you toss on it, any character kits you toss on it, any morphs, they just work. And the nice thing about it is if you do it the way I'm going to show you how to do these, these face paints, um, then uh, you're using transparency and it just blends right into any other textures that are there too. So it's a really unique, handy tool. It's, it's very similar in concept to uh, what in, uh, in the gaming industry we call decals, where you may have a wall that has a flat surface and whenever something shoots it, a decal in the engine pops up that has like a gun blast or something that sits there temporarily. Well, this is basically the same sort of thing. Uh, in a game engine, we would have a little bit of geometry that pops up. It sits right on the surface and, you know, has a decal to it with, uh, has an image on it with a transparency map. And that then gives us the, you know, the illusion that something is, is, has changed. Um, in, uh, in Daz Studio, we have these geo shells that give us a duplicate of the mesh that we can apply these textures and things to that will give us that that illusion of something added on top of the character. So here we see how to set up just the facial geo shell. And you can see the visibility is divided into surfaces and face groups, just for organization. And I'm going to crank down that mesh offset now. And I do believe that I still, looks like I might still have some, uh, some eye elements in there. So let's go look at those. Let's turn off the eyelashes. I sock it off. It's interesting that, uh, or maybe those are the uh, characters' eyelashes showing through. Yeah, yeah, it is. Okay, let's go ahead and reduce this mesh offset then to 0 0.01. And so now you just see this sort of gray mask sitting on her face. And also, if you, if you lose your selection like I just did, you can always just click in the drop down of the parameters tab and scroll down and select it there. Okay. I'm, I'm kind of picky about it. I like to double check a lot and make sure that, uh, that I have just what I need visible. So. It can be a little confusing to look at sometimes when you get into areas like the eyes and the eyelashes that have some transparency on them. So the next thing then to look at with, uh, with these geo shells is your materials and then we're going to follow that up with actually just painting textures. And I'll show you the process that I go through for that. So let's take a look then. Select our geo shell. It should be parented to the figure. There we go. Now let's go to surfaces. And here you'll see geometry shell. And it's going to have the 3D light shader on by default. So if you wanted to apply some kind of uh, transparency to that, you can go in there and, and do that through the, um, the uh, opacity map section of that shader. 
but I'm going to go ahead and change mine over to IRA. So now you'll see we have the IRA Uber shader present. And then to get rid of this kind of milky white overlay, that overlay is really just where there's the opacity is down at 50% right now. So we can dial that down or all the way up. So that gets us started with having a GeoShell in place. Um, it's really kind of nifty too when you see how you know that that shell that sits on there just because of the nature of how that's designed, the way those are built. Um, you know, you can it, it will it will follow everything so perfectly. I, I absolutely love that. It offers a lot of uh, interesting options. So the next thing we're going to need to do is send this over. Oh, I'm going to send this over to ZBrush. Um, you could download a UV template to use on this. Uh, I think I think they're at Daz, or you could use UV Mapper to to output a template for the face section. I'm going to save one out from ZBrush, and so folks, I know a lot of folks who uh, watch these with us are ZBrush users because I focus so heavily on that. Um, so if you've uh, if you've ever wanted to know how to make a, a UV template out of ZBrush, you're about to find out. So. Once this is over into ZBrush, we're going to see that I have my figure and then my GeoShell. So if I solo out the layer for my shell, the subtool for my shell, you'll see that it's actually the full figure. It has the full body of the figure there. It doesn't send over just that face. So if I want to see only the face, um, I'm going to auto group this based on poly groups or excuse me, UV groups. And there I can see pretty analogous to what I had. Now if I uh, if I go a step further and auto group that with UVs, we'll have just the part that I want to work with to create a mask. And then you can see how that sits on top of our figure. So I need to create a template for this. So I'm going to work at a 4096 map, so I'll go into UV map, set that to 4096. Then I'm going to, going to go into my texture map tab, create, and we'll do new from UV map. Actually, let's do new from UV check, because I like the way that looks better. Okay. So then I'll clone that, and I'm just going to export that. Trusty Scratch PSD. So now once I have once I have a template that I can paint into then we can start having some fun with it. So here I've popped over into Photoshop. Like I said, you can you can download this uh, template of this from somewhere else. I thought it was just a nice little aside to throw in here uh, for the ZBrush folks. To, uh, to see a quick way to make a UV template. So from here, let's just do, let's just do a really quick, I'm going to show you how quickly you can do um, almost, a, uh, almost a viable product, really, uh, at least to quickly get a good result out of GeoShells with some interesting stuff. Um, let's, just, let's just draw some stuff on here real quick. Um, I'm going to have a little bit of fun with this. So let's take, um, let's take the freeform pen tool and let's do something like this. Okay. And then maybe let's add something like that, like that. Just having fun with these little ribbony sort of shapes. I'm 
I, I don't actually work in Photoshop like this very often at all, and this is really just for the sake of, of demonstration. And I thought it'd just be kind of cool, so. But it's really just to kind of show how quickly you can create some really cool patterning, interesting stuff that can translate over into um, a GeoShell based project and give you some very interesting results. So if we take something like this, now I'm going to duplicate it and then flip it horizontally. Then move this over so that I can see it sight up down the center. I like the kind of chaotic thing this has going on in it. So. Now let's just use some layer styling to kind of uh, I don't know, have a little bit of fun with it. So let's take, uh, let's do a color overlay and maybe make it a nice dark red. And then the next thing I'm going to do after this, okay, I'm going to end up saving this out a couple of different times. Um, let's say we want to add a little bit of texture to this too. Let's just uh, let's just open this guy back up. Um, I'm just going to pull in something. Ah, come back here. Something out of some of the presets in Photoshop, just just for the sake of, of expediency here. Um, that might not be a preset actually. So we'll just do a little bit of this stuff, just a hint of it. Let's play around with uh, this. I like to change the, uh, the direction on the shading so that it's more vertical because most of the time on a face, the light's going to be hitting from, from either up or down. And uh, if you had like, if you set this kind of stuff so that it's really focused on uh, on vertical uh, lighting then it ends up not uh, conflicting with lighting your scenes so much so there we just we have that cool kind of crazy chaotic face paint deal going on and then the next thing I'm going to do is throw myself a solid color layer under here and I'm going to save this out once. Let's go, let's see, let me save this under bytes. I'm just going to add this to my Geo Shells kit. So let's save this as JPEG. And I'm going to call this. Live one texture. Okay, so here I'm saving out my my texture map. Then the next thing I need to do is save out a what's going to be a transparency map. So since I started with my shape layer that I created in white, I can just turn off the effects to it, and now I have white on black, and this will make a a, a great um, trans map. So, just come in here and save this. And then, the last thing I want to make is a normal map that will help give the illusion of this stuff actually uh, lifting up the surface and having a little bit of surface value to it. So to do that, I'm going to open up my original texture map that I made, and then I'm going to desaturate it, and then auto levels it, which desaturate is Control Shift U, auto levels is Control Shift L, 
and then I'm going to use the X normal fil uh, filter. You can also use the NVIDIA Tools normal matte filter. They kind of do the same thing. I have some preferences for the X normal version. Uh, both of those are free downloads. If you just Google X normal, you'll find it. So uh, I'm going to do X normal and then height to normal. So that's going to convert grayscale to a normal matte. And it'll open this little guy up. We hit continue. So now we have a pretty viable normal map for that. Okay, so there we have transparency, texture, and normal. All generated inside Photoshop. The only thing I did in ZBrush was just quickly save myself out of a UV template because I didn't have one laying around. So now back inside Dash Studio. I'm going to switch over to my IRA view and I'm going to go choose one of my presets because the default IRA view, I just don't really like it. <laughs> I think it's a dirty liar. And uh, so I'm going to switch over to one of my IRA presets. Um, and let's use, I'll use my, uh, my infinite white room. I use that one a lot for judging uh, textural stuff. So while that is loading in, I'm going to take a moment to uh, look over at our chat, see who all's here, say hi to some folks. Oh, man, that happened quicker than I thought it would. So uh, let's see who all are here today. Well, we've got a, got, a, got a few people watching. That's great. So see, I'm going to scroll back up, too, just so I can get some hellos in real quick. Uh, see, Lobo was the first person here. Mr. Lobo, how you doing? Uh, see, Lobo... Scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Susan is here, Silver Fox Studios. How are you? Anna Roja. Hope I'm saying that right. Griff Fox is here. Hey. Miss V. Hi, Miss V. Cinder Blue is here. Hey, Sam. How you doing? Henrico. Henrico. I have to roll the R on your name, man. I love that. Henrico. It makes you sound smooth like Antonio Banderas. Enrico's awesome. He's been putting out some cool stuff at CG Bytes. Very happy to see that. So, uh, Magic Bugs is here. Hey, how y'all doing? And uh, Jamie Coulter. Hey, I know you. We talk on Facebook sometimes. You're super cool. Hey, uh, let's see. Well, all right. Glad to see y'all folks are here. And uh, I know I kind of hit the ground running on this today, but I wanted to pack this stuff in tight so that... Uh, you know, so that we just we get it in there and you guys can just digest it as quickly as possible. I know sometimes I tend, I feel like I tend to ramble a little bit. And uh, so I wanted to make sure that I just hit this stuff hard and fast today so you guys get all this information quickly so you can actually go through it and, and hopefully, uh, you know, be able to come back with some questions in the end and, and really get it without having to, like, especially in the rewatch, without having to, like, forward through too much of my groaning. So, um, we have our IRA settings in place, our render settings, I should say. So now I have my, ge my geometry shell selected, and I'm going to go to surfaces. And since I have all this other stuff hidden, I'm probably only going to really have to work with a couple of surfaces here. Um, those are going to be the, uh, the face and lips. So I can just click those here, face and lips. And just to be sure that those are the only things I need, I'm going to check it by cranking down that opacity and so that does that that tells me that yes I was correct I'm working with just the face and lips so now the first thing I'm gonna do is in that opacity channel I'm gonna browse and let's go let's go find my maps I have a lot of stuff goes on here in our little studio so I have to drill through a lot of stuff sometimes so, GeoShells, textures, here we go, here we go, and so here's my transparency map. So now you should see that, boom, there we go. Now we have our, our face paint on the, on the figure there with the GeoShell. Okay. 
So I'm actually going to switch out to switch out my, my render preset to something that's a little darker, has more has some background to it, uh, just because there's some things I want to show that are uh, uh, that 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 white infinite room of mine won't. Uh, It'll show them, but they they won't stand out as obviously as here. Oh, and also in my render settings, I want to make sure that I have auto headlamp turned off because it is like the ultimate damn dirty liar. I hate that auto headlamp. There there needs to be. I, I need to dig around and see if there's a way that I can set it so that it just never does that because that thing drives me batty. So there. We have our overlay right there on the mesh. That was quick. <laughs> um, that's a little sloppy. You can see here, you know, I, I uh, um, wasn't really, I was just kind of swinging wild. So, you know, some of it goes down over her, the corner of her eye. I probably wouldn't actually do that. I would change that. But this is demonstration. So it's, it's fine. We can roll with it. So um, anyway, the next thing I would do is grab my color. So let's go to base color, go to browse. And let's bring in that color map. And there you'll see that applied. And what's really great is once you have those maps, you can then go in and, and use them in different places in different ways for all kinds of nifty stuff. So let's go ahead and apply the normal map. And now you should see some, some roughness start to come up in the surface texture there. Let's zoom in just a little bit more. Now, I think for folks, I think there's a lot of folks out there who are wanting to do textures, they want to do skins, they want to do character stuff, but I think the reasoning behind a lot of the things that people want to do with, with character kits and skins, um, you know, they, they want to change something specific and they end up thinking they need to paint an entire texture, but you don't, you really don't. You could actually, like if I, if I, if I looked at um, a Daz kit like Rune and I, and I liked the kit but I don't like her eyebrows, right? I could just paint a transparency map around those eyebrows and then put new eyebrows onto my character using a GeoShell. Just replace them. Um, you can do all kinds of neat, neat stuff like that. Like the, the, the uses for this are, it's just, I could go on forever with all the different crazy ideas I've had for ways to use this and just a lot of the different utility that it has to offer. Enrico says this will work great for aging a character by creating wrinkles, moles, scars and stuff. Oh, don't you know it? There is so much, um, you know, and it's really kind of neat because you could actually use the geo shell on top of the, the, the other, um, skin and, um, like you could actually apply material settings from the underlying character into the geo shell just by copying, you know, just by right clicking on a material, copying it from the, the, the character and then switching over to your geo shell, pasting it there and then apply changes to that right on top of it. The, the ways that you can blend this stuff together are just neat. Um, Loki says with geo shells, I can see second skin clothing to make a comeback. Oh, don't you know it? Um, I like I fully intend um, to to really start using this a little bit more um, because there are times when, let's say I'm doing I do a fair amount of science fiction stuff, and with that um, you know comes on a semi regular basis different types of bodysuits and things. So if I have a bodysuit design that has just really a body stocking at the bottom of it. There's no reason for me to model a new body, body stocking, you know, body, body glove like that, because I can use a geo shells, you use a geo shell to, uh, to put the overlay on there and have that form fitting clothing, paint it, and then add the harder elements, you know, say it's a body, a body suit, and then there are armor elements and different elements that attach direct onto that. 
um, as long as they don't have to blend uh, into the cloth, you're good. And you can even go so far as to morph that uh, those geo shells. The geo shells can be morphed on their own, and that's kind of a neat thing. Um, let's see, Susan says uh, uh, makeups, tattoos. Oh, absolutely. Like um, some of the stuff I'm going to show you here in just a minute is going to get into a little bit of that. Um, there are some things that you have to kind of think about with it. You almost have to train your eyes to work in grayscale uh, in generating your, your trans maps. That's kind of the trickiest part. And like, like on something like this, that's kind of a tribal sort of deal, where I'm having very hard-edged um, designs, um, or, or, or they're just designy, you know, it's just a lot of artsy design. Um, that artsy design is very easy to do because you really you're not really worried about how it blends into the skin underneath you don't have to do a whole lot of grayscale stuff um, a whole lot of cool blending and stuff with that so um, when you get into trying to use geo shells for makeups and things um, it gets a little trickier because it just takes a, a, a little more deftness of hand to uh, to do those grayscales and to really get that transparency map exactly right but it's not that hard. You know, it's like, it's a little more difficult than what you just saw me do, but it's not hard by any stretch. Not even, not even a little bit. Um, so um, let's just, uh, oh, and geo shells can stack too. You can stack as many geo shells on the figure as you want. So like you could create multiple overlays that actually, like we could take this design and do another piece that adds more design elements and apply it through another overlay, through another geo shell, and actually create more and more complex designs just by stacking more and more shells. The river says one less thing to rig and worry about. Amen to that. River says, can you adjust a geo shell to be a covering like a mitten or sock? where it's not around individual toes and fingers. Yes, you can. You can create morphs uh, that sculpt a geo shell. Now, you're going to run into some issues with that, with that specific idea um, because the nature of topology around fingers and toes is not going to be real conducive to smoothing out into something very mitten-like. Um, that's kind of where you start reaching the, uh, um, the outer bounds of what geo shells are really good at so um, yeah in those kind of tight spaces it's it's a little a little ickier um, you know you, there's you're, you're gonna run into some real limitations there so uh, and we're joined by Nick Silver hey Nick how you doing so um, let's go ahead then and look at some material settings on this and um, it's it's really neat the way that works um, because once you have that transparency set up, oh man, the, the, the volume of things you can do is just so nifty. So I have um, that color map in here. I'm actually gonna take my color map out and we're just gonna go back to white, but you'll see that it still has that textural value to it because of the normal map. Let's take that down to black. So now you've got that material for it, that set up. Uh, it's so handy because you can go through and make all those color changes and things and just do just tons and tons of stuff. Oh, can you geograph? See, so River says, can you geograft onto a geo shell? That's actually a really good question. I have not experimented yet with the effects of combinations of geo shells with geo grafting. Um, and, and I honestly have no idea how that's going to work out. But now that somebody has said it, I will definitely experiment with it and see where it leads and see if it opens up any other uh, kind of interesting ways to put things together. So, Henrico. One thing that bugs me about Genesis characters is the puffy fingers. Geo shell might be a way to create more realistic hands. Uh, you know, Henrico... The, uh, um, if, my, my suggestion would be to actually sculpt yourself a morph 
to, to, to treat the hands in a way that's that's more like what you might be after. Um, and, and if it's something that, you know, like you sculpt the, the sculpt a morph and you feel like it makes the hands more realistic, then that's a totally viable product to release. Um, that's a, that's a kind of a big deal there is doing those morph products. That's, th those are really, really cool things. So, um, now the, the, the other thing that I will say about that though is, um, the Genesis figures are by design, very low resolution. And I love that. Everybody hears me harp on that. Uh, how much I prefer low resolution because we can always dial up resolution. You know, it's like when you start with 60,000 polygons, you can't dial back from it. But when you start with 20,000, you can always dial up from it. So the thing about uh, about that particular subject of, of you know, the hands or, or adding details or, or changing those things, um, the one drawback to the Genesis figures is that the resolution being kind of low, um, you really have some limitations there with what you can sculpt morph-wise uh, in products that uh, that are released, um, you know, through places other than Daz, and that sucks. Um, that is something I, I really do wish they would open that up. But uh, for whatever reason, they decided that they would keep the uh, the uh, the licensing on their their subdivisions is locked into like you can use like products can have subdivision but to be able to take advantage of morphs and shapes that have different levels of subdivision corresponding to them requires the the, the hd morphing plug-in and they've got all kinds of licensing and crap with that so there's some stickiness there that i i've never been real fond of but that is what it is but still even with what is there you can do quite a bit so let's take a look over uh, So I want to continue on with a little bit more with the material here and uh, just kind of use this as a, a springboard to show you a few different things that you could do with this. So let's say we wanted to take that, that design that's sitting on the face right now and turn it into something metallic. Um, let's, let's take the base color up from black a little bit. Let's make it kind of brassy. And then I have metallicity turned all the way up. So now it almost looks like she has little metal strips applied to her face. Really, really cool stuff. Let's uh, turn up our glossy layer weight. Turn the reflectivity up really high. We start to get much more metallic sort of feel to it. So, and that could also be like a, a uh, if we wanted to take that into the realm of like a, a metallic metal flake sort of makeup uh, applied to the face, then we can go down to... Um, uh, this metal flakes. And I really like playing with this stuff. This is this is just fun stuff. Let's go down a top coat weight. And I want to make sure that in that top coat, I apply my trans map. So let's go browse. Because if I don't have my trans map there, we can end up having the specular values that that creates uh, flooding out over the, the transparent areas. And that can create some real strange effects. So we want to keep that locked in, and by, by applying our trans map to the top coat weight, um, that literally weights where top coat is applied, uh, with black being a, a, a zero value and white being the, the fullest application of, the, of that top coat. So now you see that, that metallic sheen starting to come up, and uh, let's turn reflectivity all the way up on that. We're just going to get silly with it for a minute. And we can zoom in super, super close. And you can see now between the interaction of the normal map, the top coat, all these different material elements, it really does start to feel like some kind of metal stripping just sitting right on her face. It's so cool that way. Um, we could do so much more with it too. You know, it's uh, oh, in the uh, the top coat, um, we can apply our normal map and get even more sort of detail popping out of that based on the texture that we painted. So now you'll see it gets that roughness to it, almost like foil. Let's 
swing around that a little bit. Now you'll notice when I turn my view, you see the full geometry there, the full geoshell geometry, and, and it will show up brown. So it, it can be kind of disconcerting when you see that in the viewport. So I, I really kind of dig that. I like that kind of gold foil thing on the face. I don't know, I don't know why. It's just something really cool about that. So at the point where I want to save this, okay, this is, this is one of the big areas that people kind of get broke down on, uh, on geoshells. Um, is actually just saving it out. The way that you save out a GeoShell is as a, uh, a wearable preset. So I'm going to go ahead and name this shell. I'm going to call it uh, Tribal Gold, just because that's the first thing that pops into my head. Um, then I have a, uh, a library set up here for it. You could save this. If it was just for your own use, you could save it into your My Library. Um, that's kind of the default place. Um, setting up a library for this is something I recommend, uh, and you definitely want to have a separate library set up for it if you're going to sell it as a product because um, it just makes it easier than trying to go through and drill through the default library and pull all your elements out and reorganize them. It's better to go ahead and create a library um, for that, and I think that we have a uh, um, a, a zip, a template zip um, that we uh, that we have available. I, I'll have to check with Terry about that, uh, but I do believe we have a, a zip that has a template of the folder structure for this stuff in it. Um, that's like for any kind of product. It's kind of generic, but it's a really nice uh, starting point. So, uh, to save this out, I want to make sure that I have the figure selected, not the geoshell. We're going to select the figure, and then I'll come into my library window. You could save this from up here, but I, I like using this little, this little guy. We'll hit the plus sign here, and we'll go to wearable preset, and I'm going to call this tribal gold. Or just trouble gold face paint. And then the dialog that comes up will have your save options. This is the only thing we have in the scene, so that's the only thing that's available to even select. Um, you can save other stuff with it too if you want it. But by default, it's going to save the material settings that are on the GeoShell. So this right here where it asks about materials is actually pertaining to the underlying figure. So if you created a geoshell and a texture set for the character that goes under it, uh, or for the, uh, that corresponds between the two, so you created um, a, a character set uh, that had, I don't know, let's say, uh, let's say just for instance, you did some kind of a piece of metal in a geoshell, and that's supposed to look like it's coming out of a wound on the character underneath, and you have a texture for that on the character. You could save all of that together with the wearable presets, so that here you would uh, you could include the underlying character stuff with that wearable. So that when you drop it on there, it changes all of that out. So let's go ahead and hit accept. Then I should be able to just delete that off there and. Let's drag that into place, and there you see it works. So, and that is a geoshell. There's no, there's no special geometry to go with it. There's no rigging that you have to do with it. It's, I, I think that it is probably the single easiest way to create a product because you can create such cool, creative, nifty-looking stuff with these. Uh, and they apply over top of anything applied to the character. So, like, right, let, let's just let's just grab our uh, our G three female for a moment, and let me go into some of the characters. I have a pretty large library of these here, 
Um, let's go and just apply this Arabella. Okay, that's a that's a pretty popular character from a while back for the G3 female. So if I apply that to her, give that a second. It's going to, have to load in a bunch of stuff. While that's loading, I'm going to glance over at the chat. River says, uh, you said you could use it to block out eyebrows or change them. How would you keep the drawn-on ones from showing underneath? Um, by drawn-on, I'm guessing that you mean the, the ones that are painted into the, uh, the underlying maps. Boy, this is really taking a minute to, uh, to refresh. Let's see, does it have to be a character, or can you apply a geoshell over other prop? You can apply a geoshells to anything. So there you see, um, I applied the Arabella character to my G3 female, and the geoshell just follows right along with it, snaps right in place. So just just that factor alone about geoshells makes them a crazy cool thing because you can make you, know, you can make products that have probably the highest degree of compatibility across uh, anything that folks use uh, is going to be with these geo shells. So let's just turn her back off. And there you can see it, it follows right along. So let's take a, 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 a quick look at just a response I can give to, uh, to what uh, uh, Riverthorn asks about uh, those eyebrows. And I am I'm probably about to sneeze, so hold on just a second. Oh, pardon me. Mm, sneezed really hard. Wow. So let's just uh, let's delete this geoshell. And we'll start up a new one. Okay. Uh, let's go to my C tab. Select it. Let's delete it. So, and I'm going to try to do this. I'm going to try to keep most of this inside Photoshop. Um, though I'm way more comfortable working in, uh, in ZBrush. So, um, Let's say we wanted to replace the eyebrows on a character. Let's go open up. I got to drill. I have so much stuff to drill through here. Hold on. Uh, let's go open up. Since I, since I have the Arabella stuff in there, let's let's open up a copy of that. Okay, so. And I do believe this would be the default Arabella face map. Okay, so let's take that. I'm just going to copy it and paste it right in here where I've been working. And you should see it just goes right over top of our template there. So I'm going to move a copy of my template up. And then I also am going to just squeeze it a little bit like that with levels so I can then screen it because I, I like I like being able to look at it like that that's a little easier on my eyes <laughs> so now let's say just right here in Photoshop we wanted to make something that that really is just for replacing these eyebrows okay um, let me find let's find something to for this. Uh, I have to drill for just a second. Scan. Let's grab I'm going to grab this lady's eyebrows just as a as something they have to shove on here. That's going to be real low res. Yeah, it's, it's very low res. It's, it's kind of silly, actually. So let's grab that. I'll use it really more as a guide than anything else. Okay, there's 
close that. <laughs> and you know what? I really don't like that idea. Let's just do this. Let's just come in here. This guy. Let's grab brush settings. Come back here. Shape dynamics. There we go. Now, I'm just going to paint on here for a minute. Some goofy stuff. That's enough there. Now let's sample the skin color right here. Just going to get a color swatch sample right there. I'll paint that underneath. And then let's add some noise to that. And then I'm going to fade that noise back. And then let's do a little bit of a texture in it too so we get a larger sort of grain and a little bit of color variation. And then again, Control Shift F will let me fade that back. And then from there let's take our Dodge and Burn tools. These guys are so handy. Dodge and Burn and we can then use that. See how I'm able to blend that out then and really start to make it match. Oh, my bad. Back here. So I want to work with real subtle values for this. mid-tones just a little bit okay and there I can see now I've got that blended pretty pretty well River says okay but this will only work with what you designed to go to Arabella what if you wanted to work with the skin of any character well the reason that I'm doing a skin tone here okay is so that I can make this match specifically uh, if I wanted to do something that's going to blend with any other character, actually, this will blend with any other character and just have the skin tone there. So we could use the materials to alter the skin tone on the fly, or we could just use this uh, like working in this way. Wow, man, it changed my interface on me. It's really did not like that. Why did it do that? Oh, darn you, Photoshop. Oh, that angers me. Sorry, that was a huge distraction right there when it did that. Um... Like that. Ugh. Sorry, I, I just got extremely irritated by Photoshop deciding to revert my interface on me. Um, so, I would make, you can make different um, skins, different tones as a basis to go under different uh, uh, kits, or you can set it up so that you would be. Like, like we could do, okay, let, 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 me, let me backtrack on this. We could actually do two shells and have one that has just a skin replacement like this. And if it's just the skin tone as a replacement, then you can actually alter the color of that really easily with materials to match up, you know, on, on other characters and things very easily. Then have another shell that just has these, these eyebrow hairs in it and sits on top of that. So you can do a lot with just layering this stuff out. So let's just take this stuff right here. Do some craziness with it. And this is obviously, you know, this is not something that's meant to be realistic at the moment. This is just for the sake of, of show and tell.
you, know, you, you would definitely want to put a different kind of work into that sort of stuff. But for the sake of just showing how this, this can work, there we go, we've duplicated those over. Oh, I said we duplicated that over. Now let's hide my template. Go to that. I want to bring my uh, my color fill layer back down here. Okay. And for the for a color version of this map, I would do a solid color. It's going to pull from that outer edge. That way we have a, a nice bleed. And let's just uh, let's come in here. Save this. Dang it. My navigation is doing some craziness on me. Just a moment. Turn that off. Turn off the skin layers. So we have just this. Off that color overlay. So we get that just white. Actually, pardon me, I'm having a bit of a brain fart there here. What we want is these guys right here. So let's just go ahead and do a, uh, a uh, color overlay on these and set those to white. Uh, okay, and Trans. And then I'm going to open up the demo browse texture, convert it to grayscale, and then run my normal map filter on it. And you'll notice you, it's really subtle there, so that's that's there's nothing wrong with that though. Pop back over to Das Studio. Select my Genesis 3 female. Go to Create. Let's do a new Geo Shell. And I'm going to call this Demo Eyebrows. And again, you're going to go see this whole process again here where you have all this white showing. So let's go down to our visibility. Go down to surfaces. And let's set all of these to off. And since I only worked around the eyebrows, I just need the face. That's just kind of cool looking like that. That's really kind of creepy. Um, and I want to bring in some of that underlying uh, material into play. So I'm going to select um, a material from the character that I know has all the same settings that I want. So I just selected her face and hit copy. And now I'll go to my eyebrows, or my demo eyebrows geo show. And I'll go to my surfaces. I'm going to go to face. I'm going to paste it. And when I paste that, it's going to look Oh, I forgot I have to change it to IRA first. 
So now when I paste that, it's going to be a little strange because it, it has all of her, all of her stuff in it, but it's slightly offset. So let's go change the offset. <laughs> Pardon me. So that's under general mesh offset. I want that a point zero one. And at this point, it's almost like you're just barely even going to be able to tell that there's anything going on here. But you're, you're going to see a slight line where this geoshell currently is casting a tiny shadow around its edge. So now we'll go into our, our surface from the geoshell. And I'm going to go to my cutout opacity. And we'll browse. And so now I'm going to have my my eyebrows applied into that opacity. And this is actually a pretty complex little setup that they have going on here. So it would probably take a little more tweaking to make this work than what I'm what I'm actually wanting to do right now. Um, but it is all quite quite doable. So there, we're starting to get some of that. Let's turn off the glossy layer weight. Bump. I don't want any of that. I don't want any of the stuff from the original map to stay in here at the moment. So I'm just turning this stuff off. Oops. Boy, that made it hang. So anyway, there you can kind of see a really, really quick take on it. And I'm trying to do a skin replacement uh, and overlay that's going to interact with the maps and stuff like that. Um, like I said earlier, it, it takes a little more finesse because like with this, that, that grayscale that I did is very, very ham-fisted. That's a very rough grayscale. Um, but you can at least see the beginnings here of what I was talking about. I, I hope that makes sense. I, I feel a little bad showing something like that that I'm not showing perfectly, but it's a... a uh, it's a, like I said, it's something that takes a little more time, a little more work, but you can do some really cool stuff with it. So let's go ahead and delete this out. And I will show you the um, results that I came down to for what we are uh, giving away as the freebie. So actually, before I do that, though, I want to take a short break because we are an hour in. And as is customary, I like to get uh, it's the it's the hour in coffee break. And uh, so this gives everybody a chance to kind of, uh, you know, stretch your legs, rest your eyes for a second, grab something to eat, something to drink, um, pop any questions off into the chat. And uh, I will be back momentarily.
All right, and I have returned, coffee in hand, ready to pick up with the next hour. So, any questions, comments, anything from anybody? Do we have a quiet group today? It seems like we have a quiet group today. That's okay. All right. So, um, I wanted to take a moment and kind of show you guys some stuff in the um, the, the GeoShells kit that we're giving away as a freebie with this um, and if it's uh, uh, I think Terry said that it will probably be available tonight or tomorrow um, so you know sometimes we get slammed with things and, and have to play fast and loose with when we can get stuff out the door but it will be there you guys will be notified of it so there's that so let's um, let's grab this overlay that I made here yay and we'll just double click that and it should pop into place on her or not. Isn't that magical? Here, let's drag and drop that. Oh, I just doubled up. Derp. My bad. Sorry. Uh, I forgot to say that uh, the geo shell that we made for this, when you load it in, by default, it loads in. Um, I believe it loads in transparent. So, and I think it just freaked out IRA. Oh, Susan has to go. Later, Susan. There we go. So once this is loaded in, it'll look like it didn't do anything. That's why I kind of freaked myself out there for a second. Um, but after it's loaded, you apply materials to it. And there was three different sets of materials. We have 12 materials total on this. Each one based on, uh, there's three different sets of maps and 12 materials that uh, are built out of these different maps. So here, let's just uh, apply one of these. I said, let's apply one of these. Interesting. Let me back up and uh, start. All right. So there we have our overlay. There we go. Now, okay, I didn't think I should load in transparent. I did something goofy there for a minute. I'm sorry. A link to that folder structure you mentioned earlier. Um, let me check with Terry and see. See, uh, Lobo is asking about that folder structure. And uh, I do believe we have a zip uh, of that. Uh, and if I'm not mistaken, it should be actually in the, um, um, the uh, it's like a vendor's bundle or something like that. Terry knows the specifics because that's her department of things. Uh, but I'm pretty sure that that is part of, uh, of what is in like a, a vendor's kit. So, But uh, we'll make sure that we get that uh, Posted into the chat or uh, or made available uh, through uh, through any of numerous channels. So once we apply our geo shell, then I should be able to select said geo shell like so, and then apply these other material setups to it. And some of these are pretty nifty and are a good opportunity to go in and kind of pick up some ideas uh, for, for ways to use I-Ray materials. Uh, like um, the way that there's metal flaking used in some of this stuff is, is pretty darn nifty. So this is also a really great way to do, I think someone else had mentioned like tattoos. Um, you can do some really cool stuff with that. I thought this was just neat. This was some fun stuff. So here I've taken um, my, my basic setup with all this and I've added to it uh, an emissive color and I have my trans map shoved into that emission channel. So then I'm generating light based on those lines.
And since it's iRay and it's physics-based rendering, the light that it generates is really real light. It actually does some really cool stuff. So let's take a second and I just want to walk through each of these because each of them, they kind of are based on each other's setups, but then they also show just like how intricate you can get and show some really interesting ideas for ways to use this uh, uh, artistically. You know, like here I've used kind of some lace patterning. So like if we were to take the uh, this material that's currently on here, let's just take this uh, diffuse color and let's turn it black for a moment and turn that translucency down. So there you get this kind of filigreed sort of sheen out of it. If we wanted it to be more of like a cloth lace overlay to her face, you know, we can turn that uh, glossy layer weight down and get rid of, uh, let's get rid of the metal flakes, and get rid of top coat. And on this one, I played around with the uh, opacity quite a bit, too. Another handy uh, aspect of the iRay Uber shader is using these diffuse overlays. So here I'm using a diffuse overlay color in this and I have the weight of that diffuse overlay guided by my trans map. There you can see if we change that I can take this to just pure white lace. So whenever I want to save something like this out, though, I make sure that I save it as a wearable preset. I select my Genesis 3 figure, I save it as a wearable preset. Then once it's saved as a wearable preset, I can select it in here and apply all my different material changes and save those out to their own material library. And there you have it. There you have you know a very finished uh, product that doesn't take very long at all to make, but artistically can create some really cool looks on a character um, just offers a lot there's a lot that can be done with it so I'm going to take a little bit of time now to, to work inside ZBrush and show you kind of how I prefer to work on something like this so I'm going to load back up my, uh, my project that I had made for this Just take a little walk through through some of the aspects of this that I like to use in ZBrush. Give that a moment to load. It's a pretty heavy file. I'm on ZBrush. There we go. So here you can see. Uh, instead of just generating my normal maps from, uh, from the images the way I did in Photoshop, I actually prefer working in ZBrush so that I'm sculpting, uh, sculpting for my GeoShell. So here I have an underlying character, really just there as a, uh, a placeholder for me to look at, and then... Here you can see where I painted this particular map. And 
if I turn that on, I turn on transparency. I want to invert that. Now, if I turn on transparency there, we should see that overlaid. And I can actually look at it geometrically inside, uh, or at least a version of it inside ZBrush and have a really good idea of all kinds of nifty stuff going on there. And I can also look at these and see you know, how they would stack on top of each other. You just see all kinds of stuff in here working, uh, working on a ZBrush. Very, very handy. If I wanted to combine those, you know, I, I kind of know what I'm doing. I also prefer working out of here on something like this because then I can, I'm, I'm actually painting to the, the geometry and not just you know, over a texture or over a template. So for, uh, for my fellow ZBrush users, there are a few things that, uh, that I want to show you guys that are just super handy little tools inside here. Okay. Um, let's take a look at this shell. One of the things that I do when I'm working on a geo shell inside ZBrush, like for this, I was working on just face masks. So I made sure that I deleted all of that geometry other than the face. So just like before where I showed you how when I was making the template, um, I grouped it based on uh, UVs and then I selected just the areas that I wanted uh, to make a template from. Well, I would go through that same process and I would just delete the other stuff uh, because I don't need it. And then I could subdivide that up and actually have a really good resolution to work on without going overboard. So let's just take a look. I'm going to make a duplicate of this subtool and let's make another one of these masks real quickly. Um, a, a great product idea for this. I think people would really dig and you know anyone who wants to do this and, and uh, make a few bucks with it, it's my gift to you, um, is uh, take this kind of thing and go do some sugar skulls with it. Because those things are just, you can do anything with them. You can do all kinds of designs. There's, there's an endless you know, endless ideas that you can pull out for those. And they're just always cool. You know, they, they just, they never really get old. So I'm gonna flood this with black. And let's kill some of that background range. And once I flood something with black, a lot of times I'll start working with polyframe turned on because the black can actually be hard for me to look at. So let's turn on RGB, and with my standard brush, I have symmetry turned on. I'm going to switch to, actually, let's do it this way. Let's flood this guy with white, and then switch it to black. And then from there, I can just paint as needed. So let's say I wanted to create like a mime face. I might come in and take a mask lasso. Something like this. Okay. And then let's sharpen that mask. That's kind of interesting too because you can actually create a texture from a mask. So like right here, um, let's go ahead and take out some of this around the eyes. So we could make a mask or make a, a texture just from that by uh, hitting create alpha. So that's going to take our masking and send it into our alpha channel. And then from the alpha channel, I could hit make texture, and then I'll have a, 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 a great mask that I can save out from that. So um, let's invert that, because anything that's white becomes visible in transparency mapping like this. 
So we'll invert it now and export it. And let's just... Uh, check my uh, my directories here to be sure okay cool. so let's come in here and just do another demo we'll call this one mime face one trans jpeg okay so we save that out and now I'm just going to build up from these settings too, because this is kind of a cool place to start. So um, I'm going to go through and start changing out some of these maps. So let's go in and grab this, come back up, demo, let's grab mine phase one, and it should be in my listing here somewhere now that it's loaded once. There's just so much stuff that pops in there, though. There we go, mine phase one. So I'm just going through and replacing everywhere that I had the trans map with this guy. And all of a sudden, we have Susan Sarandon from Rocky Horror Picture Show. That's actually kind of neat looking. Just the, the porcelain, shiny sort of thing going on there with that. So just right off, you've got a basis now in that for making all kinds of nifty stuff. So we could go from that. I just made that from the masking. And uh, then from there, let's just invert that mask. I said invert it. Come on, ZBrush. Oh, ZBrush is being finicky. There we go. Invert it. So now we could take that and do all kinds of really cool stuff with it. You know, we could... Uh, oh, it's crazy. It's so crazy how much you could do with this. Let's turn on uh, our stroke... Lazy mouse, turn lazy radius up, and I'm going to turn dynamic off. That way I can get some nice, tight little uh, lines. And I'm going to repeat that stroke a few times until it becomes nice and hard. And that's, that's just hitting one on your numerical pad. This stuff is actually a lot of fun. I, I, I never release products like this because I, I don't know, it's just not something I ever really do as products, but it's they're actually a lot of fun to do. So it's also kind of neat too, just thinking about this as I draw that stuff on, you know, we have, I've used the transparency map that I just made for that mind face to create this, this little mask overlay, but then the other patterns that I had for, uh, for all of these other materials can come into play as well. So we could have, let's say we take, um, oh, let's use this neon green glow. Let's just replace this for a minute with the neon green glow. But then in my transparency map, the cutout opacity, let's drop mine face into that. And then change our uh, 
overlay color to white and our base color to white. So now you've got the mime face, but with that stuff embossed on it and glowing. And here, let's let's apply these other settings and just watch what they do when we change it out to the mime face map that I just made. And we can also just go to currently used and see a lot of stuff there. It's kind of kind of a handy little trick. So I like this one because this, this, this is a nice one to show how um, we can bring in that metal flaking and you can see the big metal flakes. There's a lot of really neat stuff that can be done with that. So I hope that this kind of gives you guys some food for thought because there's like there's so much stuff you can do with this and once you start playing around with it, it actually just becomes fun. Like you can play around with it and get all kinds of neat looks, just really cool stuff going on. Um, I'm going to uh, I'm going to go into one other kind of approach to this. Or uh, before we in the before we have to wrap up here in our last half hour, so let's delete this one out of our scene, and I'm going to go create a new geometry shell. Bing, boom. Actually, no, I'm just going to load the one in that I had because I like that this one um, comes in with everything hidden that I need hidden. So let's just load that guy back in. Then I'm going to go to my surfaces. Oh, let's select the geo shell. Ding, ding. Go to our surfaces. everything. Basically just reset. I, I wish there was a way to just reset all this stuff really fast, but uh, unfortunately there is not. I should probably just save out a, uh, a default uh, material, you know, something that overwrites all this stuff. All right. So right now we're going to have kind of glossy face, which is really kind of kind of disturbing. Let's turn the top coat off. I really want to just get this down to where it's a matte surface. Okay, and I'm going to copy that material and apply it to all the materials in that geo shell. 
and I'm going to change my base color to white. And let's save this as just a white geo shell. That way I can get back to it really quickly. So wearable preset. Oh, I forgot to select figure. There we go. Select figure. Wearable preset. Flat white mask. So doing this is a nice way to have a, a neutral, a nice flat starting point. Blood mask, Lobo says. Magic Bug said, cut off one corner and have a Phantom of the Opera mask. Yeah, you actually could do that really easily. Would not be difficult at all. Um, just do it with the masking. So, now let's pop back over here. And let's duplicate this. So that's kind of some nifty stuff. I'm going to keep that. Cancel that. Duplicate that. Dupe it. So... What I want to get into next is really going to deal with some ideas for doing makeup related stuff inside uh, ZBrush. But really just generating grayscale uh, trans mapping that you can use in a geo shell to, to basically act as makeup over existing textures. So let's take. Um, Take our standard brush, we're just going to use RGB, turn this down nice and low, and then I'm going to switch over to black, and now I am not a, uh, a fashion makeup person, a glamour makeup person, um, by any stretch of the means, so this is going to be pretty ham-fisted stuff here. I'm just going to do what I can with it as quick as I can. If I were doing this for a product, I would definitely pull myself some references and work from them because, uh, like I said, I am, I am just not a uh, you know, that kind of a makeup guy. So, let's just do this very light, what is it they call this, the smoky eye? <laughs> Any of the ladies present probably uh, have a better idea of that than I do. Just that little bit of a map right there, we could use to generate some pretty nifty eye effects. So let's come down and do new from poly paint in our map, which it's going to mess with me a little bit. So sometimes when ZBrush throws that error and it, and it doesn't want to regenerate. Uh, what is in uh, in the poly paint? It goes back and pulls something from from previous memory. Uh, you have to go down a sub D and uh, generate from poly paint, and then come back up, and it'll be fine. So let's clone it and export it. So let's call this Smoky I One Trans. So there. Save that out. Now let's come back over to DS and in my geo shell, in its surfaces, I'm going to grab the ears, face, and lips because those are all that I have left showing. I said in my geo shell, not her. There we go. Geo shell, face, ear, and lips. Okay, so now let's go down to our cutout opacity. Browse. Go grab that map. And I forgot to invert that map. Whoopsie. Now sometimes iRate does not want to update maps on the fly. And that sucks. Um, when it doesn't want to update the maps on the fly, then you have to switch out to uh, something else in your viewport and then back to iRate for it to regenerate those. Much would a set of makeups add to the size of a file if you were to do a full set of makeups and lips? Um, probably.
probably not a whole lot. Magic Bug's question there about file size. Um, probably not a whole lot because, I mean, you can do these as JPEG maps. They're not that heavy. Um, there's no geometry involved. There's Yeah, it's probably not a very heavy product at all, file size-wise. So, now if ZBrush could just finish saving that, saving me from myself. Okay, so now let's export that. There we go. There we go. So that's the tricky part right there. You, you may, you'll, you'll, you'll paint in black on white, but then you get it inverted. So let's come back in here now, and if it doesn't work, then that means it's not wanting to refresh properly. Oh, it worked. Cool. So now we have that bit of makeup in that area. So once, just once we have that trans map in there, um, you know, we could do different normal maps and things to give it some skin texture. Uh, it's probably not a bad idea, just something to, to bump it up a little bit. Or if you want to keep it smooth, there's probably nothing wrong with that. Um, but the thing that I really dig out of it is how once you've got that trans map in the geo shell, then from there, uh, let's say we wanted to do kind of a green overlay to the eyes. Well, there you go. So and you can get just a huge, huge variety of looks in something just by, by messing around with these settings on top of a trans map in a GeoShell. I, I don't recommend turning up glossiness very much in there unless you have a map to drive it. But um, yeah, there's, there's just so much that you can do there. You know, if you wanted, I don't know, let's do some glowing green eyelids. Just, I don't know why, just because. You know, let's turn that up and that up. You give that just a moment. Of course, it still has my, uh, my previous maps referenced in here. And it's funny that that green color that I'm using there kind of conflicts with the purple and they sort of blot each other out a little bit. So, the thing about it is, like a lot of stuff, you can have a lot of fun with it. There's a lot of experimentation to be done, and you can get some really cool stuff just playing around with those things, and really with very little overhead. You don't have geometry. You don't have rigging. You just, it just is what it is, you know, and, and you can have fun with it and create some super cool stuff. There, if we crank that opacity all the way up. I'll probably pick up more of that, that glow that's there. Oh, drag that luminance up. There we go. <laughs> so, neon eyelids, you know. That, that stuff always means. There we go. So, <laughs> you can get so much goofy stuff out of that. Um, that's just fun. So, I'm going to take a look over at uh, our chat and see what kind of comments and questions and things we may have. Um, 
And uh, yeah, let's 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 see what you guys think. River Thorns is black light makeup. Yeah, you. I mean, you can do you can do all kinds of neat stuff with that. Um, let's see. It's a thread on a forum complaining about texture map file size, as Nick says. Uh, you know, Nick, uh, file sizes are something people complain about a lot, but it as as somebody who has sold this stuff has been in this market of this stuff for a long time that is a debate that will never stop and my personal take on it has really become what is best for my product what is going to yield the highest quality product that I can put out and there is a balance to be struck so I don't really like to um, um, uh, I, I don't like to just go overboard for, for no reason with file size, but I don't see a reason to hold back anymore with it, especially with the kind of bandwidth a lot of the folks uh, have access to for their downloads and all that sort of thing. I mean, it's just, I just don't see a whole lot of, uh, of, of reason to throttle myself uh, artistically like that so especially when my goal is to give people the best product I can give them so sometimes sometimes you need really big maps you know it's just it just is how it is so um, let's see magic bugs everyone's hmm all bells and whistles about huge file sizes can't have both uh, yeah Nick says there's a DAS script that will reduce texture sizes. I'm, I'm always leery of anything that reduces my texture sizes um, because I, I really don't want something. Anytime you reduce a texture size, you're going to have lossiness. You're going to introduce uh, potential artifacting. So I, I don't mess with that kind of thing a whole lot. But, uh, but that's just me. So that's, that's, that's just my, my two cents worth on it. So... Here's, uh, here's really what would be kind of the most normal use for this particular map, this particular uh, map on a geoshell, is to uh, darken up those eyes like that. And then you could come in and dial the opacity level down and actually control the degree of, of the effect. So it really becomes very, very much makeup-like. Of course, if you also wanted to have um, some different uh, colors and things going on, you know, you could just paint those colors. Okay. So if I were to, um, let's do masking from this. Let's do mask by intensity. I'll invert that mask. Let's hide it. So now let's take, uh, oh, what would be a couple of good colors? Let's start with like a dark purple right in here. Okay. And then let's go to maybe a really crazy red on the outside. And of course, it's going to throw this little error on me, so I need to I need to go down a sub D, bake my texture out, and then come back up and bake it out at the highest resolution. That way, ZBrush actually sees what's there instead of pulling stuff from from uh, memory it's trying to hold on to. So this one I'm going to clone. And then let's export it, and we'll just say eyelid colors, smoky eye colors, one. 
Now let's come back over, set our base color back to white, browns, and grab that texture. So now we have those colors applied. Of course, where it fades out, I really should uh, um, should spread those colors more because uh, where I've made the masking on that from that, that real white uh, paint, it's going to have some white that it picks up from the outside of that where it fans out. So let's just go ahead and paint kind of a larger area and I'll resave that. So we can just get kind of sloppy with that. It's really funny. You can take something like this, do a bunch of color combinations and then do different masks that let those combinations come through in different ways. It'd be kind of neat. Oh, forgot to go down. And hit it. Now we come back up. Let's see if it'll update that uh, the texture. Yep, there we go. So, and of course, you know, once we have that texture in there, again, you can throw that into any of these channels and get all kinds of neat effects. So, I mean, if we were to throw that into our, uh, let's let's go into our emission channel. Let's turn that back up. And let's make the uh, the color that it emits come from that map. <laughs> so there, you, know, you have those colors, and the light being emitted is from those colors. And it's just kind of neat. So you can do all kinds of crazy stuff with it. I mean, I, I'm I'm really just kind of swinging wild with some of that, but it's fun. You know, it's it's fun to see what you get out of it and where you can take it to. So um, let's see. Looks like we don't really have uh, a whole lot of questions going on. That's good. Hopefully that means that I have uh, shown this stuff in a way that is clear and makes sense to everybody. Um, we are coming up on the end of hour two, which means that we are just about to wrap up uh, today's show, presentation, seminar, whatever you want to call it. Um, let's see. Uh, Henrico points out some things about some just some cool ideas uh, for different ways that you can create products that use this. Yeah, there's all kinds of stuff that you can do. Um, and uh, uh, next week in the uh, the Google Hangout that we'll be doing for uh, for uh, exclusively to uh, CG Bytes content artists, folks who are selling at CG Bytes, um, as is the kind of the program um, where we do the public seminar. That, that demonstrates something that's kind of a general use, which to me, this is a general use. There's a lot of general use you can get in this. Um, next week, we're gonna take this idea and expound on it for you guys who sell at CG Bytes uh, to show you some ideas for uh, more advanced uses of it that apply to products and ways to really do some cool stuff. So um, you, you definitely wanna be there because uh, um, We've got some cool stuff coming up. There's some things that are that I'm going to be showing about uh, geoshells. I'm going to be showing you how to do morphs on the shell itself, um, doing uh, ways to do wounds, and all kinds of nifty, nifty, nifty stuff. So, um, yeah, you definitely want to be there for that. Um, so I want to thank everybody for being out today and hanging out with us, watching this. Um, I hope you guys are picking up some cool tips and tricks from, uh, from what I'm showing. Um, it's been very, very interesting and cool for me to watch and see how uh, you know, new folks are stepping into uh, the field and, and creating products and giving those out. Um, I like seeing some of those new faces uh, as regulars in these seminars. It, it really is cool for me to see you guys stepping into that. So. Um, See, Colonel Sanders says could be useful for veins, moles, blemishes. Absolutely. 
you could totally do a lot of stuff with that. Um, and then one of the other things that I'm going to be covering in the in the uh, uh, the exclusive Google Hangout next week with it is uh, how you can also alter. Um, you can have different UV sets that you call in for these and ways to save that stuff out. There's just there's man the 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 volume of places that we can go with this. Um, there's there's really no way to cover all of it in just two seminars. But I'm going to try to touch on enough points that it really gets your juices flowing with ideas for ways to, to create cool stuff uh, with this. Because, I mean, at, at the end of that, that's what all these are about. That, that's If you go back and you look at one of the rewatches for one of the first, uh, first shows that we did, you know, that was kind of the theme, is make cool stuff. You know, I, I want to see you guys able to, uh, to maybe create income from it. Um, but really, the point of all of this is making cool stuff. And if you make cool stuff, you can also make income because people want cool stuff and they'll pay for it. So there. Um, so, yeah, useful for veins, moles, blemishes, stuff like that. Colonel Sanders says absolutely. Um, so make sure you guys are uh, signed up. I want to thank uh, Loki, a.k.a. or Jason, a.k.a. Loki, and uh, Terry and the folks at CG Bytes for putting these things together. Make sure you guys are signed up. Um, try to get something together. Part of part of the cool thing about these uh, these geo shells too is it's it's they're quick products. They're quick ways that you can make cool looking stuff really quickly with these, and you don't even have to have any of the expensive software. You can you can just use image editors to do it. So there's a lot of, of cool opportunities for that, and it's kind of a, a gateway. You know, it's a nice uh, way for folks to get started get their feet wet in this stuff as a potential uh, means of, of just, you know, making a little bit back from uh, from from what is a, a hobby for a lot of folks. You know, not everyone's a professional at this, and that's cool. Um, but it's a, it's a nice way for you guys to uh, maybe make a little something back out of it. Uh, other people enjoy the, the stuff that gets made from it. And then, um, you know, out of that, what you make from it can become the, the starting point for making a little bit more, saving up some more, and then buying some of these other programs and moving up into, uh, into you know, just deeper and deeper into doing this stuff. So there's a real path that, uh, uh, that, that I kind of saw a long time ago as, as this stuff started happening as a market. And there, there really is a nice pathway from hobbyist to professional. And a lot of what I'm trying to, to help you guys see and learn through uh, through what we're doing with these seminars is that path, you know, because I, 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 I feel like there's a really cool way that um, as you use your imagination to create new things, uh, the things you create have value to others. They will buy those things, enriching you, and then you are able to buy more of their stuff and and we develop we've developed this kind of a really neat little art economy off of it that I'm fascinated by and I really like the idea of you guys being able to play in that being able to be a part of that and, and contribute to that and make something back out of it it's just super cool and it, it's neat the way it works and makes me very happy so um, anyway uh, thanks to all you guys for being here and for sharing in that and picking up stuff you know, for bringing stuff to CG Bytes, and uh, remember to uh, uh, like and share any of our other videos that you watch. Remember to subscribe to the channel because, um, on a, at least a semi-regular basis, I I don't have like a set day that I post my quick tip videos, but I do post videos from time to time, especially when people hit me up, uh, like on Facebook or wherever, with a question. If if it's a question that they need help with. And it's something that I'm like, that, that I immediately say, oh my God, yeah, everybody needs to see the answer to this. Then a lot of times I will do a, a, a quick tip video for it and post that here. So if you guys are subscribed, then you know, you'll get notice of that and you'll, you'll know when a new video goes up and you can pop back in and watch it and all that kind of stuff. So uh, anyway, that wraps us up for today. Uh, thank, you, thank you all again for being here and CG Bytes for putting this on. Until next time, you guys keep making cool stuff.